Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlothauer here, and I am very, very excited to present you all my second winter 2023 outlook on this YouTube channel since it started back in mid-September of this year. Now, if you are new to the YouTube channel and you really like the content, hit that red subscribe button right now, hit the thumbs up, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. Now, before we do dive into my handcrafted outlooks, what did you eat for Thanksgiving yesterday and how much did you eat? Let me know in the comment section below this video and also what are you doing today for Black Friday shopping? What are you buying at the store like at Target, at Best Buy, at Walmart? Let me know in the comment section below this video. So our first pit stop will be our January through March temperature anomaly forecast that I created here. All these maps, like I said, are handcrafted by me. I made these maps, everyone. Nope, I did not copy anyone else. These are all purely handcrafted by me, which took quite a lot of time to make. So I hope you all like the layout and the graphics a lot. So looking at those temperatures, it is likely to be above average for the southeast, for the deep south, for the northeast, where you have a 33 to 50% chance of seeing temperatures above average. Now, this is an average mean. This does not mean January, February, March will feature well above average temperature chances, but maybe one or two out of the three months could feature that over the southeast or for the deep south or for the northeast. This does not mean it's going to stay this way the entire winter. And besides, these are chances. This does not mean it's going to actually happen, if that makes sense. So for the northern tier of the United States, you have a leaning below to likely below average chance of seeing temperatures below average for the Great Lakes all the way across the northern tier of the United States, across the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest with equal chances of that occurring over California. California, Nevada, also for Wyoming, stretching across Kansas, Missouri, if you are in southern Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, you have equal chances of that occurring. Now, as far as how much or what are the chances of you seeing above average rainfall or snowfall for January through March? Well, here's a look at my map. Again, for the deep south, for the um, the desert southwest for California, there is a 33 to 50% chance that you're going to lean below to likely below chances. So very dry winter could be expected here for California. If you're in Arizona, if you're in southern New Mexico, if you're in central and southern Texas, unfortunately, could be a really dry winter yet again for these locations just because again we're in a La Nina and speaking of La Nina here's a quick look at it and we can see that this is in a moderate to strong category right now overall look at all these blue anomalies here this indicates that sea surface temperatures in this area are certainly below average this does not mean they're freezing this does not mean anything this just means departures from normal we are seeing colder than average sea surface temperatures. Over the Atlantic, they're above average, and over the Pacific here, they're also above average north of uh, Hawaii. So th these two areas here will help correlate with the variable jet stream that we typically see during La Nina events. And that's what's exactly going to happen here for this winter. And so that's why we are predicting very dry conditions down here across the deep south and across the desert southwest, including for California. But above average chances here of rainfall or snowfall over the northern tier of the United States, as well as the Great Lakes, going to see well above average chances here leaning above to likely above over Michigan, northern Indiana, and then of course, a li a slightly above or leaning above chances there over Washington and Oregon. And I want to make this clear with you all that these outlooks that I did create are different from the Climate Prediction Center. So I don't want to be called out in saying that way your outlook is different than the Climate Prediction Center. We all have our own opinions, and I want you all to understand that when watching these outlooks that I do create. It is not the easiest thing to make a spot-on forecast when you're forecasting literally over 90 days out. I mean, that's very hard, don't you think? That's why we put probabilities, chances of this or that of occurring. 
So here's a look now at your January, February, March impact forecast. So what is this going to feature for your location? Well, it's going to be very wild like a roller coaster. We're looking at dry and warm conditions across California, Nevada, Arizona, southern New Mexico, western Texas, mild conditions across portions of the deep south, warm and wet across Louisiana, southern Alabama, southern uh, Mississippi, southern Georgia, and Florida, looking at some kind of subtropical-like feel. The air is going to kind of be muggy at times, and that's going to lead to this area. Severe weather zone is certainly a possibility. This goes back to last year's December 10th and December 15th severe weather outbreak, and it was a little active in the early part of January with some severe weather. So we're going to keep that going here for this winter outlook impact for severe weather in that region. And then of course, cold and wet snowy conditions across the Pacific Northwest, brutal cold Arctic air masses are likely to drop southward into the, uh, the Midwest. Also for the Northern tier, lake effect snow impacting the Great Lakes, colder temperatures in between that because we have the warm air trying to move north. We have the cold air trying to move south because of the variable jet stream. And that's going to lead to some pretty wicked weather pattern switch arounds from time to time. And then, of course, if you are in the New England coast where you're going to see snowy conditions, lake effect snow, nor'easters. And yes, there's a thin ribbon I could not fit here on the map. Blizzard conditions all the way from, say, maybe uh, portions there of... Connecticut, if you're in uh, Massachusetts, if you are in Rhode Island, Cape Cod, these areas right in here, you could have the chances of seeing nor'easters, heavy snow, blizzard conditions, very similar to winter storm Keenan last year. Remember that? Ordeal was very rough. So we could probably see the same old uh, ordeal since the pattern hasn't really changed from last year. We're going to probably see some nor'easters and some very heavy, wicked snowstorms up in the uh, extreme New England coast. And then, of course, cold and wet conditions here over Pennsylvania, portions of Virginia, and Maryland. All right, so that's a look at my handcrafted outlook, but what does that mean for this? Well, I basically, when I make these forecasts, I actually grab them from the NCEP database website. So I look at analogs from previous La Nina episodes. So these are kind of comparing moderate to strong episodes just La Nina's, no El Nino's impactful. And so we can look at this back on 1996, 1999, 2000, 2008, 2011, 12, 18, and 21. And most of these years coincided with a La Nina, of course, and lower than average heights over here in blue. What do lower average heights mean? Well, it means colder than average temperatures, simply put it into simple words. Wherever you have above average heights or geopotential, which is air masses, let's just put it this in simple words. These air masses here in orange and red are simply warmer than average. Let's just make that a very simple um, so it's not confusing for you all. Blue areas indicate colder than average temperatures. So you can kind of see where that kind of favors in the northern tier of the United States and Canada and Alaska. What about pre, uh, the amount of surface air temperatures? Well, if we take a look at this, well, it featured below average temperatures across the northern tier and the Pacific Northwest across California. Inter interestingly enough, it favored above average temperatures in portions of the Great Lakes, including the Northeast. But since Things are a little bit mixed up this year with La Nina. We have a very strong upcoming positive or negative phase of the AO. I am very conclusive to saying that we're probably going to have this pattern in place at least for most of December. Then things should flip around after that by the as we get deeper into winter. Then maybe we get a lot of these cold shots coming in out of the north. Now, what does this all mean on the Climate Prediction Center? Well, it means... Basically, with what I'm thinking of, below average temperatures for the Great Lakes, for the northern tier of the United States, including for the Pacific Northwest, including above average chances, again, very similar to this outlook. If we go back right here, really, really similar, okay? Not much changes there, and, uh, and again, because of my opinion, maybe a little bit more different than the Climate, uh, the climate Prediction Center. And then the precipitation forecast, again, 
has California not as significantly below average chances while my forecast does show that and that's because again you have to remember we have the HRRR the ridiculous resilient ridge that has been an analog future for a while over the last 10 years and so that's being put into my analog system of my climate of forecast for the winter and so that's why this is a little different than what you might see on the climate prediction center but they're similar hey it's it's not much different than what you typically might see on other forecasts like the farmer's almanac accuweather the weather channel they have their own predictions and I'm one of those people. I have my very own prediction here at David Schlothauer Weather Channel. All right, well, that is going to do with this video, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video so much. It's an honor that I was able to present you all this since you all really like it a lot. Have a great, happy Friday, everyone, or happy, great Black Friday. Have fun shopping, and yeah, I will be back with you more tomorrow with what appears to be our December outlook. I'm not going to forget about that. That's going to be out tomorrow, and then if there's time, there's a lot going on on this channel. I'm probably going to have a severe weather forecast out tomorrow, so maybe a double whammy upload it tomorrow because there's a lot going on. Big time severe weather for the Deep South is expected by Tuesday and Wednesday next week. And yes, I am aware of that. But anyways, thank you all for tuning in. I am David Schlothauer. Ciao.